to share and celebrate um, her truth and her enduring legacy with a new generation. And my hope is that they will be inspired by her story and galvanized to continue to fight for a better world. I also wanted to help people understand the connection between the past and the present and hopefully see themselves in um, my great grandmother's story. Well, one thing that I learned while I was researching Ida B. the Queen is how much my family was surveilled by the FBI. I found the uh, FBI files on my great grandmother and I really wanted to incorporate that into the book to give people a sense of what my great grandmother's life was like but also how it's impacted my family um, to have somebody surveilled by the government. My great grandmother, what Ida B. Wells, um, she was a, a trailblazing journalist. She was an anti-lynching crusader, a suffragist. She was a civil rights icon. Um, she co-founded several organizations, including the NAACP and the Alpha Suffrage Club and the Negro Fellowship League. Um, she was a social worker. She had multiple uh, careers during her lifetime. And her quest was always to give uh, full citizenship rights to African Americans and women. And she was very successful in some ways because during her lifetime, women did gain the, range, the right to vote um, through the 19th Amendment. And, but she was 58 years old when that happened. So most of her life, she did not have the right to vote. Um, and she also you know, experienced um, great progress during her lifetime, uh, especially right after slavery ended during reconstruction, she had the right to become formally educated. So she saw a lot of progress, but then she also saw a lot of backlash and violence to black progress. And we still continue some of those struggles today. I think my great grandmother, Ida B. Wells, was inherently an optimist. And one of the things I'm hoping people will get from Ida B. the Queen is her sense of optimism combined with indignation <laughs> um, because she ultimately believed that by challenging systems, by truth telling, by exposing inequality into the public opinion that would lead to ultimately to some kind of systemic change. Although there is progress, obviously there's progress from 1862 when my great grandmother was born until 2020. I have way more opportunities um, than my great grandmother did. But the fact that we have a few, I mean, we can probably name the number of black women who are in high levels of corporate uh, management in a very short list compared to the number of white men uh, in 2020, for me, that shows heroic um, accomplishments on those individual women because my, from my own experience, I've seen it where a lot of times the women who are advancing to these levels are run circles around their competition. They have to be so much better, so, many, so much more qualified at the level of excellence that the black women have to exhibit is at a higher standard than I have seen other people need to um, uh, achieve. So that to me is not a change, a systemic change when it comes to equality. Um, it's their individual effort that makes these women stand out so much. And until we get to a point where everybody is measured by the same uh, criterion, then we still will be dealing with inequality. <laughs>